Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Nick Pell coming to you once again with another book review for you. Um, this week's book is The Girl Who Played With Fire by Stieg Larsson. And uh, before I say anything else, I will just say this. There will be some spoilers from uh, The Girl With The Dragon Tattoo. Not anything major, I don't think. But there will also be uh, some spoilers as to some of the early events uh, of... Um, girl who played with fire, uh, but nothing major to the plot itself. And there, I'll talk about some of the stuff that is stated on the back cover. Um, so either this part of your book, if it's paperback, or this part, or if if it's a uh, hardcover. So yeah, know that in advance, and you have been warned. So yeah, uh, this is the second book in the Millennium Trilogy, um, by Stieg Larsson, and I'm not gonna say anything else. So let us go to the characters. And our first character is, as usual, its main character, Elizabeth Salander. And she is a genius hacker, and in this book, she is a badass. You you just see her doing a met, like crazy things. She takes down guys who she should not be able to take down in any way, shape, or form. She does crazy stunts, saving people and taking up people, dispensing her own form of justice. A bunch of awesome stuff. So you get to look forward to that with Elizabeth Salander. But she does begin the novel um, kind of island hopping and she goes on this world travel, I guess you call it. And you see her start out in the Caribbean. She's just kind of hanging out there for a little bit. And after the events of the end of book one, she is basically ignoring Mikhail Blomqvist. Uh, it with every aspect of her body. And our second character is, in fact, Mikhail Blomqvist. Um, he returns in this book as the writer and editor of Millennium. He becomes very annoyed at, by this point uh, about the ongoing press about his book that, that you saw um, had a huge impact in the world um, at the end of uh, Dragon Tattoo. And he also is kind of curious as to why Salander has kind of dropped him out of her life for to him, no reason at all. And then we also have uh, Nils German. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he is Lisbeth's guardian. And as you saw in the first book, he has raped her. She kind of made him her puppet um, after she filmed the rape and um, kind of held that over his head. So uh, he is he has more of an important role in this book than he did in the last one, and uh, he has had a growing hatred for Elizabeth ever since that event occurred and he slowly begins to plot her death. And we also have Erica Berger. Um, she once again comes out kind of as a side character but she does have an important role in the book. Um, she is still the editor-in-chief at Millennium and uh, as usual she and Mikhail kind of hook up from time to time and do their thing. And lastly we have two new characters. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say their names right, so bear with me. Dag Svensson and uh, Mia Johansson. I'm putting them together because they kind of go together. This is a couple who is kind of writing about the sex trade and prostitution and that sort of stuff. Dag Svensson is writing a book about the topic, um, exposing a number of people, police officers, judges, people in the government, all, this, all these types of people who are involved in prostitution and sex trade and have actually put down sentences for people having done this. And then Johansson is writing her thesis on it, so she's going for her doctorate. So these two individuals kind of approach Millennium early on in the book, offer up this exclusive story, which is going to have the same impact as um, the one that uh, Blankfist wrote about in um, Dragon Tattoo. So um, those are your characters, and we move on to the plot. And the story itself picks up about a year after the events of Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And Mikhail and Lisbeth are obviously still in the picture. And after the immense success of his book, uh, Mikhail is still working at Millennium as the editor. While he is also looking for Lisbeth Salander, as I said, she has cut him out of her life after having um, her heart broken. And she begins to travel the world after this happens. She does this for about a year. And the story with her picks up as she's in the Caribbean. 
And also, like I said, very soon to the book, Dag and Mia, they kind of enter into the scene, approach Millennium with their offer of the ex exclusive story, and Millennium grabs it, and they begin to work on it. But, however, um, things begin to go bad when, and this is stated on the back of, on like the cover of the book, so keep that in mind, I'm not really spoiling anything, you just have to look at it and you'll know. Um, but, uh, these two individuals become, they get murdered, and, um, it's not known why or how or anything like that until near the end of the book, um, but Elizabeth becomes the prime suspect, and, uh, Mikhail, being the righteous guy that he is, he refuses to believe that she had anything to do with these murders, um, or at least she did not commit them. And from there, the story really does take off. Um, it takes off at a much quicker pace than Dragon Tattoo did, which I really liked. And it doesn't really stop until the very last page when the book itself ends. Um, it's a wild ride up even until that. Um, and the book is once again split into four different parts. I believe the third one will be as well. And um, there is a prologue, no epilogue this time. And the book itself has 503 pages. In the hardcover edition, I don't know how many the paperback has. But yeah, that's your general summary of the plot, and I hope I didn't spoil too much for you. But we move on to themes, and uh, four themes, as usual. We have security, and this mainly revolves around Elizabeth, and also some national security as well. Elizabeth, as you learned in Dragon Tattoo, has always been a very private person. She likes to be secure about her own agenda and everything that revolves her or that involves her and when that is compromised she takes action to restore balance <laughs> we also have truth this mainly also revolves around elizabeth but also with uh mikhail at times a lot of these themes i can't really go into detail without spoiling things so just know that they're in there and they deal with these two main characters um we also have trust this also deals with Elizabeth. She has always had trust issues. You see this in Dragon Tattoo. And it's really with her kind of restoring her trust in Mikhail and just figuring out who in this world she can trust. And the last aspect of these themes is justice. And this, once again, Elizabeth. Um, and like I said with her character, she kind of begins to dispense her own form of justice. And you see this in Dragon Tattoo as well um, with your German and her kind of making him her puppet. But yeah, those are four themes to keep in mind that are in there and that have a somewhat major role in the book itself. And lastly, we have enjoyment. And uh, I really enjoyed this book. Um, it was probably the better of the two that I've read so far because it, it's much more action packed. It doesn't have to set up the whole story and world or anything like that anymore. Also, I can just dive right into these characters and can pick up from where the second or from where the first one left off, and it continues the main story of Elizabeth Salander while also um, showing various viewpoints of other essential characters. And in my opinion, as you pre can probably tell, it has succeeded immensely. It has surpassed um, Dragon Tattoo, in my opinion. The story is immensely gripping, even during the build-up. It dives into the main focus, which would be the sex trafficking issue, um, very early on. So I like that a lot better, because Dra Drain Tattoo seemed to take a while with diving into its main focus with the Harriet Wagner case. I like that fire um, got uh, much more into its main focus early on. The action in this book is also increased. Like I said, with Elizabeth, she has many more action scenes and you get to see her look like a badass in this whole book. Almost everything that she does uh, is just awesome and she has become one of my favorite characters in literature probably. And it's very nice to see that he has built on these events that happened in Dragon Tattoo and didn't really just act like they didn't happen. Because like with some books where uh, the first book kind of ties up its main resolution. The mystery is solved. Uh, sometimes books uh, will just kind of ignore those events and not even really bring them up again. This book doesn't do that. It, while um, the events in that uh, book aren't essential to the story, Harriet uh, does make an appearance every so often and stuff that happened does come up um, from time to time. So I was glad that Larson kind of 
kept that in the rhythm and um, didn't really just shut it out. And one really cool thing is you get to find out what all the evil is. Um, if you pay attention to Dragon Tattoo, you see, or you saw that um, this event that happened in Elizabeth's life, um, of course she got committed to the uh, asylum, or whatever it was called, it was called All the Evil in her mind. And um, you get to actually see what that was this time, and it's actually really interesting to read about. And it does become a very important part of the story overall. And lastly, the book does um, transition very well between the two. There was a little bit of summary, but there wasn't a whole lot. So um, it worked really well for me. But yeah, overall, I did really enjoy this book. The cliffhanger, I guess the well, I guess the ending to the book, left me very excited to start up Hornet's Nest. Uh, which And that review will be coming next week, along with the Millennium Trilogy review. So... Uh, yeah, I highly recommend it if you read Dragon Tattoo, um, or the series in general so far, um, if you like mystery novels, because this is what that is, it's a big mystery book. But yeah, uh, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe if you so choose, I really hope that you like this review, and that is my review for this book. So, yeah, uh, as usual, my name is Nick Bell, and once again, keep on reading.